Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined as always by Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we've got six games here on Tuesday night to choose from. In this one, we are taking a look at Nate's Celtics taking on those Kangs in Sacramento, who did lose to the Yaz last night, as we were kind of cautious about, uh, thinking it was a trap game so they could look ahead to the C's game. So we are going to dive into this one. We've also got another game video up and our player props. So make sure to like and subscribe to that page and continue to follow along with us. Also head to thelines.com. can check out all the great content we continue to have up there on thelines.com as we roll into uh, March madness as well continuing on with that as well as the nba also have the odds finder tool up there you can make sure that you're getting the best odds available to you from all those sports books giving us bets this season nate let's go through this six game slate real quick and then talk about these c's and kangs yeah it starts with a pick em, wizards at magic uh the Cavs are minus three at brooklyn we like that small spread we break it down in a separate video for you guys today pistons plus 14 at atlanta spurs plus 13 at new orleans the Thunder plus seven at the Clippers with a 239 total. And then the Celtics are minus five with the Kings on a back to back in sack. And total's been bet up a little bit from 237 to 239, 240, but it hasn't been up, bet up a ton considering the Kings' reputation again. And uh, we were looking at the total last night in Utah, more looking at the fact that we thought Sacramento would be looking ahead to this game. And then, sure enough, Laurie Markinen sits. And then they come out with like no effort. They get down big, but go on a tear in the third quarter. De'Aaron Fox leading the way and still go over with a 248 total on the road. Now they're back home. They're on a back-to-back. They have crazy numbers on back-to-backs. Part of it skewed by that second highest scoring game of all time at the Clippers. Uh, But they're on, on the season averaging 252 with opponents there in some close games, Um, you know, the, they they did go under way under in Brooklyn, but we talked about the Nets' putrid offense right now in that other video. That was during a long road trip for the Kings. They are now back home after the said long road trip, um, and their previous home game on a back to back two seventy two with the with the Minnesota Timberwolves, who granted are suddenly looking like a shootout team again after playing great defense all year. So they they tend to go over in this spot for sure. Um, five and three as home dogs to the over versus they are they do go under on the road as underdogs, and they tend to bounce back from losses as well. I mean that's how you maintain your status as the two seed in the West, right? Seven and two straight up, six and three against the spread. Their last nine at home after a loss with Demontis Bonus. I'm throwing it out that they lost one two in a row. Um, with, with the, without him against the Nuggets, then he returned, if you guys remember, around Christmas, and they beat the Nuggets when the Nuggets were uh, red hot. Um, <clears throat> Will Rob Williams' return for the Celtics tonight is a big note here. It's the final game of a six-game road trip for them. They did get two days off after losing to the Jazz late. Uh, I don't know if Rob's going to play more than like 20 minutes, though, if he is out there, because they've got to be really cautious with him. At this point, it's probably health overseeding for the Celtics, who have just been straight up average since the all-star break, like every single defensive stat, just average, um, slower pace, 13th offensive rating, um, dead last in mid range points. Not too, not too unusual. Also, uh, you know, losing the free throw battle pretty badly and losing the battle on the boards, which is the one thing that Rob Williams would help correct. If he is in there Kings right now are number one defensive rebounding rate, um, Uh, since the break so they would need him out there to kind of match that Uh, but yeah this is a get right spot I think for that Boston offense which same thing when they started this road trip in Atlanta right like obvious get right spot putrid defense especially guarding the three-point line that's what we're dealing with the Kings um, who not only struggle to guard the three but are giving up the most assists since the all-star break uh, they're, they're, they have a 120 defensive rating in that span. The one thing they limit is, is like points off turnover, second chance, but the Celtics will, will burn you in the half court. There's some pretty stark numbers here defensively since the break, uh, that they, they just regressed defensively the Kings, but they've made up for it with their incredible offense, allowing six more points per game, four more threes on seven more attempts. And again, yeah, the most assists per game, which is three more than they were averaging before the break. 
So I think this Celtics team with Jason Tatum leading the way, I think it's a good time to buy low on his props. 33 and a half points and assists for Tatum against the Kings team. He's roasted against the Kings team that's tired and does not guard the wing very well. I think he will be scoring a lot. I do lean over here. I mean, you'd be crazy to take an under yeah. with the Kings right now. I don't really know the last time they went under at home. Uh, it's like <laughs> it's six of their last eight have gone over at home. And just one game since New Year's has gone below 231 at home. That was against the Raptors in a in a dead dead game. They just steadily get to at least 238 in these home games. So leaning over and leaning Kings to cover plus five is is a lot for a really good team that's at home. Yeah, I think that's that's my preferred play tonight. To be honest, is is them coming in and. Uh, and being able to cover at home, at, even on, on the second leg of that back-to-back, it's a pretty short flight from, from Utah to SAC. Uh, interesting that we're, <laughs> we're talking about the two most recent teams to lose to this Utah Jazz team um, <laughs> in, as, you know, as they're looking to, to actually make plays down the stretch and get seeding in the two-seed here for both these teams in their conferences. But um, it, it's going to be a battle of threes. There's going to be a ton of threes. I think we know that um, you know, since basically, well, let's just, let's just say March. I mean, we could, we could look at a bunch of different sample sizes, but this is going to be number one and number two in terms of making threes over the course of their last, you know, let's say three weeks or so, two weeks, um, both of those things. I mean, the, the bucks have been, been shooting, obviously the, the dubs are up there, but they've been playing on the road. Uh, so there's less stats for them as of late to show their three point shooting. Regardless, they're they're both average at best uh, in terms of guarding the three right now. Boston has been good at times, um, but right, you know, as we said on the road lately, hasn't been their forte. It's been just making threes on the road is, is what they they've been relying on, and obviously, it's what they rely on all season. Um, you talk about wins and losses, and and the amount of threes that they're hitting versus m- missing um, in those games, and it's really in in losses they're shooting thirty one percent from three. That's 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 pretty much it, right? And in, in wins they're shooting basically forty percent, almost forty one percent from deep so it's like it's one of those things that you don't love to have to bet on and Rob will being in there would be super helpful because that's that's kind of where I start with with sack if if we're going to talk about them um, being able to sort of get theirs on on deep on offense rather um, Keegan Murray's been on fire guys all around the perimeter have been on fire for the last three games for this team um, and I think you, you can kind of bank on that as well I, I don't believe in in the Celtics um, desire to, to shut down the three-pointer right now let's let's put it that way we talk about effort on the three-point line in that Cavs game as they're going to funnel things for them because they are just flying around uh, you know the three-point line and we just need to see that for, from the seas tonight and we, we need to see that consistency uh, as they're finally getting healthy in the backcourt and, and having guys available um, the clutch numbers as well uh, it come into play here, and we know what the Kings are. We know what De'Aaron Fox is. Uh, he's going to be our first ever clutch player award winner that we now have in the NBA because it's just it's crazy what he's doing and continues to do in that time frame. And and that's what I, I like down the stretch as well is like for for the Kings to be able to score um, with that you know top five clutch offense at the end of games right now. Uh, it, it really has been all season and has maintained that since the All Star break, staying in that top five. So. Um, th- that's where I, why I like them to be able to cover as well. And you look at them as as home underdogs this season, and, and they are losing those eight games that they've been in such a situation. They've covered five of the eight. Um, they're losing by like one and a half points. So it's basically like a pick them for them when they're the underdog at home. And four and a half points is just a bit too much. Um, maybe they're talking about no rest, and that's why they think this is. But like we said, we were looking ahead at the no rest in a way that was like, they're going to make a comeback. But even when they made the the, the um the bulk of their comeback in that third quarter to try to even you know bring it closer than the 20 points they were down for most of the first half. Uh, that was mostly Keegan Murray uh, hitting a ton, a ton of threes. You had Trey Lyles in there. Murray hit three in that third quarter, uh, or four rather. You had uh, Trey Lyles hitting a couple. And then De'Aaron Fox did his thing too. They got a ton of fast break points. And the fast break points they're not necessarily going to be easy to come by against the Celtics team, but it's not a team uh, in the Celtics that have been getting back on defense as of late. I mean, they're 11th in stopping fast break points on the road, specifically in the last like two weeks or overall, not even on the road. Uh, They're 11th overall in stopping fast break points, but that number goes, goes way down um, when they're on the road. They do give up more fast break points there as well, uh, failing to get back. So yeah, I, I think the sort of like tired legs narrative here isn't really worth is is really as as impactful as people might think with Boston getting that rest uh, and, and then the, the the Kings sort of, you know, being prepared for tonight, they, they continue to go over on no rest anyway. It's not like no rest is really going to mean they're going to up their defense and, and down their shooting. Uh, that has not been the case for them this season. So I, I think five points is too much uh, and that this is going to be much closer, even like a two or three point game. 
Yeah, I mean, but the the short rest is where the Kings thrive, even really back to last season, because they're so young and they follow the lead of Fox, who seems to have limited limitless energy. They've actually covered at their highest rate when they're at a rest disadvantage this year, 13-5 and five against the spread. The Celtics are also really good on short rest, so it's not like they have good numbers with a rest advantage here. And it's just the Kings kind of tipped their hand last night with their effort, uh, with not going out, with, with not playing Kevin Quarter, who might be ready to return tonight, um, you know, after, you know, deliberately they were like, all right, we'll hold you out one more. They, they have this game circled. Um, it, you know, they have a, a sour taste in their mouth, I think from getting kind of sunned by the bucks at home uh, a couple weeks ago, really the only home game they've lost in a while. And Giannis kind of dancing on their grave at the end there. They Trey Lyles in particular, taking exception to it. Uh, so now they get a shot at another Eastern conference contender. They have a, the reason they're underdogs, I don't think is the rest. It's that they're slightly below 500 against winning teams this year uh, that they have, you know, had, had trouble when they're underdogs winning these games they've covered, but uh, are they going to win? So to, from their perspective, it's like, it's, it's a big uh, time to show out. And the Celtics have won against the Western conference nine and three in their last 12, but only covered in five of those. So they're scraping by when they do win. We saw what they did in Minnesota. It was an ugly, scrappy win. Uh, this one might be a high-scoring, scrappy win, but I just don't see them really covering five, then like rolling through anybody right now as they just kind of try to limp home. This is their last long road trip, and then they get to to kind of focus on their home games the rest of the way. Yeah, I mean they're going to bring it. The the Celtics, the, the the Sixers lost last night too, and and you talk about down the stretch, uh, they they want this division. I don't know if they're going to catch the Bucks or not. Um, who you know who continue to stay hot as well, but th- this is an opportunity, obviously, for them. Uh, I, I think to to maintain some some pace in that division against the 76ers who I believe have two fewer games than the uh than the the Celtics at this point but the uh the Cs are currently you know have wins in those situations so they're essentially like a game up uh and and they need this one so I I think they're going to be bringing it but I just think that means they br- there's going to be a lot of points too it would be terrifying to go under 240 in this game that has more likelihood to reach 250 in my opinion than it does like 235 at this point so um there's going to be points there's going to be threes and and I think we'll talk about that a little bit here here, uh, in the player props as well. So that is all the time we have for you, but make sure to like and subscribe to that page and check out the other couple videos we have up for you today. So until we see you next, happy betting. <laughs>